Welcome to the Endless Knot Podcast. Where the more we know, the more we want to find out. Tracing serendipitous connections through our lives and across disciplines. Hi, I'm Avon. And I'm Mark. And today we're talking about teaching myth. Back in October, we had the great pleasure of a visit from Allison and Darren, our friends over at Myth Take Podcast, who were passing through Sudbury. We sat down for a chat about teaching mythology and the ancient world, which we're happy to be able to share with you now. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> uh, that would be good afternoon. It's two o seven. Hi, I'm Raven. <laughs> Mark. There we go. We've done all of our signatures. That's right. I'm Darren, yeah. and that's Allison. Yes, from Myth Take. Yes, and we're visiting Avon and Mark today. Yes, mm-hmm. we're visiting the hallowed halls of the Endless Knot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so welcome everybody. We're doing an exciting um, crossover episode. Crossover yeah. episode. Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> yeah, because we actually are in the physical same place, mm-hmm. which is pretty astonishing. We don't we don't see most of our friends from our phone in person ever. No, yeah. <laughs> no. And uh, yeah, so you guys are up to visit family. We're up to visit family, and you guys are in the locale. So yeah. taking said, the beauty of Northern Ontario. It, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we said, hey, let's go and see Mark and Avon. Yeah. And so here, here we, we are. are. And we're very glad that, that you are. And if we're coming, we may as well record. Yeah. <laughs> we I mean, it would be it. wrong not to. <laughs> Why bother having a conversation if it's not recorded? That's oh, what I say. I mean, really, what's the point? Be recorded from now on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mark and I genuinely will start talking about something and then say, we should have been recording that. No, that yeah, that should be for an episode, okay? I'm not going to tell you anything more about it until our episode on that. That is so hard to do, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so hard to do. That's a good thing. But it genuinely, you know, you want to make sure it's a fresh conversation. So, no, can't talk about that till we're on, on record. <laughs> it's true, yeah. There's some magic about when you redo it. It's something is lost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just, just not the same. Yeah. Not the same. The spontaneity of it. We had that with our Wonder Woman episode that we we recorded it and we didn't like the way it went. It's a it lost went, episode. So we, It'll never. We went back. We watched the movie again yeah. and we did not talk to each other on the way yeah. home yes. <laughs> until we were in front of a in front of a microphone and then yeah. it just all came out. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's right. the only yeah. what we did too. We went and watched it and the only thing we did, we got back in the car and the kids and I was like, okay, kids, how did you like it? You tell us about what you thought about it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I think we can probably tell each other whether we liked it or not, but nothing more, nothing more. <laughs> I think we recorded the next night because we yeah. couldn't stand and not talk about <laughs> it. Yeah. That's a, maybe a good thing too, though, just to let it kind of bubble for a while yeah. before yeah. you got to let no. it go. Yeah, you, know? you don't want to be walking in the lobby and, yeah. and talking about it immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's good. Absolutely. So podcasting is a good extension of what we do anyway. Uh, yeah, exactly. Teaching We're all and talking teachers. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm talking. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought we could just, since we're all in the same room, we could talk about something we all do, which mm-hmm. is what you're saying, which yeah. is we all teach and specifically all of us have taught myth, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and since you guys talk about myth all the time. And well, our... I'm not talking about myth this year, unfortunately. No, I mean on, <laughs> but... on your, uh, oh, on on your podcast. podcast. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay, you can edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yes, I have control, though. I can leave it in. <laughs> you should. <laughs> um, but so we can talk about the, what, you know, your podcast is sort of teaching myth. It's doing almost like a seminar on myth yeah. topics when you guys are talking. You know, it makes, that's what it makes me think of is like a grad seminar where you've got the text in front of you and you're yeah. having a conversation mm-hmm. and doing and, a close reading. And that's exactly what we set out to do really is mm-hmm. to have the seminar that we want to have, but we can't have with our students because they're not at that level, right? Yeah, they, right. They're, at a, at they're being introduced to a text. And certainly we talk about some of the things on our podcast that are certainly things that we would talk about in seminar with students, but we're able to go beyond that and to mm-hmm. dig in. And, and follow rabbit trails and things like that that we uh, we can't in a 50, 50 minute seminar with uh, with first year students. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've I've been TA myth since two thousand nine when I started right. my masters at Brock. Mm-hmm. Um, I think actually this is one of the first years I haven't been TA in that class. Um, so this is a great outlet. <laughs> Podcasting <laughs> is a great outlet to, uh, to to still stay connected yeah. with myth. And you've been teaching it even longer. Since 2003, for 14 years, I've been yeah. thinking, teaching, writing, and reading about mythology. Yeah. So I, I, it, it's, a, it's a passion, but it, it's, it's a life. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's something that, of course, is very near and dear to me. I know podcasting is relatively new, but it's like, it is a natural environment mm-hmm. for um, people Academics. like us. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? It sounds sort of strange, but I think it kind of is in a way. Yeah. And, and it, it is conversational, mm-hmm. right? Um, 
especially the way that we have arranged it where you know you're you're podcasting with a partner so yeah. you've yeah. got somebody yeah. there mm-hmm. and you're not just you know speaking into a wall or something mm-hmm. or reading a prompted script which right. which some people do do Oh, and can be very useful because it gives you a very organized yeah. and yeah. you know coherent narrative and gets yeah. you through your material in a nice and focused way. But mm-hmm. and, and you know, and I love those. I listen to a lot mm-hmm. of them. But it's I'm not good at lecturing like that in class, and I'm yeah. not good. At, I don't think I'd be very good at it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't deliver a lecture that way, so I don't really want to deliver a podcast that way. But mm-hmm. that that's there are different you know different mm-hmm. strokes for different mm-hmm. folks. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so you and and is it usually intro myth? That's what you've mostly been. Is uh, that what Brock, yeah. like Brock, does? Brock just uh, have an intro myth course? Does no, it have anything um, else? Well, they have a very large intro myth course. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually divided over two courses. So the fall in in the fall, the gods and you goddesses study and the heroes, gods, <laughs> and then in the second semester you study the heroes. Right. <laughs> um, if 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 you take both, and it's yeah. it's a context credit, so it's a very large class. Um, I think it, upwards of four or five hundred students yeah. some years. Wow. Yeah, we have um, because. It's one of these credits. Yeah, it's a general. It, yeah, like a general education, yeah, I guess, right, right, some, right. as some places call them. Um, so it's a lot of students who will never take another class, mm-hmm. class or be exposed to it again. Mm-hmm. And I certainly um, think that there's, I feel that there's a certain responsibility with that to make sure that we're equipping them with skills and with ways of thinking about mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. and learning things, um, which we're working on some interesting projects this year with, with the myth yes. students. Um, that will carry over into what they're, you know, into biology or computer mm-hmm. science or kinesiology and, you know, or whatever, and, yeah. and life in general, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And my hope anyway is that they will remember some of the content, uh, but they will certainly have learned how to read a text and how to think about what it really means mm-hmm. and how to organize their ideas totally. and, and how to express them in, in a coherent manner. And of course, with it being a first year course, um, there are upper year students mm-hmm. who, who who take it, but it's a lot of first year courses, which is kind of exciting, especially that first semester, because mm-hmm. you've got 17 year olds who are in university for for the first <laughs> yeah. time. And so there's there there's room sometimes, um, depending on your class dynamics, to offer a little bit of mentorship and support and, and guidance. Just on how to be Just, a university student. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. yeah. Um, so it certainly takes, I think, um, a patience uh, with with people and, and a willingness to want to teach um, mm-hmm. rather than just um, passion for the content if that makes sense yeah that, you, that, that that to to do it well and to enjoy it that's well and you yeah. and you guys will be doing that so it you've got a it's big lecture and then it breaks mm-hmm. into TA groups is that how it works yeah, yeah sections yeah usually 20 plus so we have 25 different seminar sections wow. running for our first intro myth class right maximum so seated capacity 20 students right yeah. see that's that's great I it's big U of T didn't do it that way no. we, I taught myth at U of T when so the last time that I taught big myth classes or yeah. real uh, sort of intro myth classes was when I was a grad student at U of T mm-hmm. and I taught it for years though I don't know five years or something and but and I had classes of 150 to 250. Sure. And it was two, two one and a half hour lectures a week. Mm-hmm. And that was it. And there was no, they didn't break up into groups. Mm-hmm. They didn't have TA. I had marking TAs, but mm-hmm. yeah. that was it. And, you know, that was fine. So really it was though, at that level, it was sort of performance art. <laughs> you just yeah. had to do lectures and you had to get as much as you could get. I mean, I could do a little bit of prompted discussion from the class, but in a class of 250, yeah. no one except the keenest of keeners is going to put their hand up. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk. And I get it. I mean, totally. that's pretty hard. Yeah. So it was pretty much straight lecture. You know, I'd use visual aids and stuff, but mm-hmm. it was trying to do a little song and dance yeah. to make it exciting enough. And same thing, lots of you know engineering students and computer science students and people taking this as their one arts credit. We had one term to get all of Greek and Roman mythology, yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, That's they, and, challenging. and they Two didn't, terms isn't yeah. enough. Yeah. and they didn't um, necessarily believe they should be there. I mean, some of them were taking it because they thought it was fabulous, and this was mm-hmm. their one escape from their other courses they were taking because their parents wanted them to. So, oh, but yeah. some of them yeah. were thrilled to be taking it. Sure. But some of them thought, well, this will be easy because it's not engineering, and what you actually want me to attend? Are you yeah. crazy? So it was a sort of a balance, and um, and I, it was good. It was good learning for me to yeah. learn how to teach that kind of a mixed class and to try to just get their attention and grab it and keep it mm-hmm. and I did a decent job of it though you know I was a grad student I had yeah. a lot to learn mm-hmm. um but and it was fun because I got to just sort of I just decided I was a lecturer on what I liked the textbook right. would cover stuff and then I, I added in Greek myths uh Greek plays mostly and, and did sort of those as the stuff I really wanted to talk about but 
you know, things like getting them to do good close reading of a text. Yeah. That wasn't going to I could model it. Yeah. I could put up a passage and I could do it for them. Mm-hmm. But getting them to walk it through, I mean, 250 students, Absolutely. I yeah. can't. So I never really got to get to grips with the material that way and which was always a bit frustrating yeah. we're, we're really fortunate at Brock and, and mm-hmm. Brock students I know I, I shouldn't be too partisan but uh, but Brock students are also fortunate because because they benefit from this seminar yeah. system yeah. that the university is very supportive yeah. of so you have your two hour lecture and then you have your, your groups, one yeah. hour seminar so that happened with the English department the English yeah. classes I took did it that way yeah, because anthropology understand. did it that way <laughs> but classics had not had big classes up until this point like yeah. even when I was teaching maybe they even do it now I don't know if they do but when I was there, they'd only recently started having classes that were bigger than 50 or 60 yeah. people. Yeah. And they really didn't know what to do with it. So the first thing is they threw all their grad students at it. And most of the profs had never taught classes that big. Right. And the grad students were figuring out how to do it. <laughs> and then second, they didn't have it with a seminar system. And they just didn't, you know, they just yeah. had no history of it. So I hope maybe it's gotten better. But Well, like in the well, English department, because they understand literary exegesis. Yeah, like they you know have you to have to this. be able to sit and talk about the text. And if you yeah. can't, you're not getting it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? That's simple. And the nice thing with with a seminar system, um, you've got your twenty students now. As a TA, I think you can do up to ten or twelve seminars. Yeah. So you could have a lot of students yeah. over the course of a week. But you've mm-hmm. got your group of twenty students, and you're with them for twelve weeks, and you 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 kind of get to know them. Yeah. Um, if things go off the rails for somebody, there's at least a face, a person that they're used yeah, to interacting with. You know whether with. they're turning up. Things like that. It, yeah, yeah, suddenly <laughs> things go sideways and you're like, your participation isn't matching, mm-hmm. your writing mark, like mm-hmm. what's, what's what's going on, that kind of thing. But the other bonus for it from, um, because I experienced this from the grad student side of it, is the support and the opportunities to develop teaching yeah. skills. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that that, that I went there. Um, and they have a whole, a whole program for graduate students yeah. to develop TA skills and teaching yeah. skills and those kinds of things. Yeah, they're that, working on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. something again that, and I think U of T did have some of those programs, yeah. but our department didn't yeah. really wasn't aware of them or used them. And I sure. I got no yeah. pedagogical training whatsoever. Yeah. I was first yeah. time I ever taught a class. I was given the course description from the calendar. Well, well thanks. Yeah, and a date and a time and a place. Yeah, great. <laughs> and it was a 150 student myth class evening summer course. Mm. Yeah. Two three hour cl- lectures a week for. A, you know, a month and a half. Yeah. And there wasn't even anyone on campus when I was there teaching, yeah. right? Yeah, like, there was no one to, like, go back. It was in, it was in another building that I'd never Uh-oh. been in. Anyway, various horrible things happened, which I will not go over. Yeah. But it was a <laughs> baptism by fire. But, you know, I didn't, I had no idea what, to, I didn't, I, at first lecture, I wrote out my entire sure. lecture and read Script. it to them. Yeah. Lecture because script. I don't know yeah. how to lecture, you know, yeah. I didn't, anyway, it was all, I got, yeah. I did get individual help from individual props, but there was yeah. no, no structure. And I think those, they've gotten better about those that. Those experiences are universal. Yeah. yeah. But you, you wouldn't know it if you talked to like, you know, only a small group of yeah. people. Yeah. You wouldn't know how many yeah. people have done that and yeah. gone through right? that. Yeah. But every, and it, that's, I think is the missed opportunity and the tragedy in a mm-hmm. way, because if we would have had just a little bit more opportunity to learn a little bit more quicker, mm-hmm. then our students would have benefited yeah. earlier on and yeah. we'd be yeah. much more ready to Yeah, exactly. To, those to students who had me things. those first yeah. couple of years, I don't I, I don't think they didn't learn anything. Well, I think they definitely I did. Not. But <laughs> yeah. but yeah. you know, there was a lot of stuff I could have done better, yeah. even just with the straightforward sure. lecturing style. Yeah. 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 What do you so, well, I started teaching myth actually in English courses, first mm-hmm. of all. So mm-hmm. in, in sort of intro English courses, uh, teaching, you know, here are some traditional forms of narrative. So, mm-hmm. you know, I did folk st- tales and myths mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, different types of, of oral narratives, oral narratives that are, yeah. or other types of narratives mm-hmm. to, to introduce the idea of what narrative is and how it's been used cross-culturally. Yeah. Um, and so I threw in some myth, mythology mythological texts in there and um uh kind of got it into it sort of through the back door that way totally uh but then once i found myself here and able to teach in a classics department um i thought well myth is something i'm interested in teaching but i want to do it in um you know maybe a slightly different way i'm more interested in the theoretical approaches so i yeah. came up with the idea of creating uh, a theories of myth course mm-hmm. and it was 
um, again, it was cross-cultural, so it was comparative mythology. So I could teach not only you know Greek myth, but Norse myth, which is something I'm really fond of, mm -hmm. and you know different myths from around the world, and show how theoretical approaches can be used to interpret them in different ways. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's a third-year course. And that's that a third-year course. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, which is because we already had a first-year myth course at the time. It was being taught only online here. Actually, yeah. uh, it's now taught on campus, but. Uh, and again, it's taught to 50 or 60 people and there's no seminar groups. It's yeah, just right. a, a lecture class. Um, but and it's very popular, as you'd expect. But yeah, that, that was so we called it Theories of Myth and mm -hmm. you developed it for the department, I don't know, six years ago now, seven yeah, years ago. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And taught it a couple of times. <clears throat> yeah. And then that's the course I've taught here. Right. Because again, somebody else, it, you know, the, the myth course is somebody else's yeah. um, baby at yeah. this point. Yeah. And I don't teach the first that first year course. It's actually a second year course here, but pretty much there's no prerequisite or anything right. but the theories of myth I've taught a couple of times now mm -hmm. and you're going to be teaching it again next year Probably I guess next yeah. Year. Yeah. and uh, it is it's a lot of fun because it doesn't presuppose people necessarily having taken the intro to myth it's not doesn't require that but of course often people have mm -hmm. but it gives you an um, you know there's never more than 30 35 people in that class so that's much yeah. more it's maybe not an exactly a seminar but it's much more mm -hmm. um, face to face yeah. and the that's other cool. context that i teach myth in is in film um so i, I do a, a ancient world and film course and i kind of do it heavily on the the myth side rather than the history side um, because i see this really interesting parallel between the way that film works and the way that myth works yeah it's this common cultural uh, capital that everyone kind of shares in we you know you go to a movie theater together and you all watch it in a group oh, and they yeah. and they become <laughs> yeah. these sort of cultural reference points you can drop a line from a film yeah. and express some sort of you know Absolutely. extra meaning through it yeah you know these things are, are very similar to the way that myth and then they are. they they develop develop an elusive intertext to yeah. yeah. movies with especially within one genre but yeah. then they can also make you know generic references to other genres of course it's yes. true of all literature but it's yeah. a very popular set for that yeah. like yeah. people don't I read used... liter elusive literature the way they no. might yeah. but yeah. they do watch well, movies that that ties in actually with with something that we're doing um this year uh, working with the myth professor. So as TAs, for those not familiar with, with the university system, uh, we work for the professor and we, mm -hmm. we lead the seminar sections. The, the professor does, does the two hours of lecture, sets the syllabus, sets all the exams and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, so depending on the professor you're, you're working with, um, you have different amounts uh, or a different degree of, of, of leeway in what and, how, what and how you, you, you cover it. Um, and the, the professor that is teaching it uh, this semester, we both worked with him a couple of times Oh, yeah. And one of the challenges that we have found over the years is getting students to engage with text. Mm -hmm. um, they're reading, they're reading poetry, they're reading Greek plays, and it's you know it's it's it it's, it's like Shakespeare or yeah. worse yeah. because it, it's completely unfamiliar to them, mm -hmm. and and we forget that because we're so used to mm -hmm. dealing with it. It's very easy to yeah. to forget that. There's a barrier of genre and a barrier of culture before they can even get to thinking what the exactly. text says. Well, yeah. hence Mark's idea yeah. of using myth as a sort of gateway drug into the yeah. wider world of literature in yeah. many ways. Because mm -hmm. if you don't understand a reference to Neptune in a Shakespearean play, you're yeah. pretty much lost. That's the thing. <laughs> you know? and, and I think the thing that originally got me interested in, in myth was the way that Chaucer uses myth, actually. Because right. yeah. he, you know, he drops references in all Everywhere. over the place. And yeah. mm -hmm. If you don't know the story, you're just not going to be able to follow his his reference. Yeah. Well, one of the challenges too, though, is that we are approaching this as written text, and that yeah. is not how the ancients experienced it's for the most it. part, yeah. right? I mean, obviously, it was written down at some point, but it was experienced by listening to somebody recite it, or watching a play, or seeing images on a pot. Um, so this year, with with the yes. students to get past some of these these barriers of form, um, we've been developing. We've we've been working with our center for pedagogy innovation and we've been developing a series of worksheets that encourage students to think and record information Visual. visually yeah, right. so they ha so you're doodling i've been yeah. seeing yes. pictures yes. of yes. doodling on, yes. uh, on twitter yeah. and um we're 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 hoping to get some feedback directly from from students and it's, it's um new. It's new. We, we've heard from the from the tas there's kind of yeah. varying degrees some students embrace it some are like whoa no give me something to write i'd rather write a paragraph mm -hmm. but we're asking them to experience it more like the ancient Greeks would by to uh, by imagining 
and it and it's multimedia right? and it actually requires yeah. a lot more work and effort mm-hmm. to do it um, because you were you were saying the, yeah. yeah you yeah. you were saying the other day it's one thing to kind of put some words down on a paper mm-hmm. but then to take that to, to take an idea and then figure out how to represent it visually that's yeah. like translating it the synthesis you have, to, synthesis. Synthesis. You have, to, really you have to understand yeah. it before yeah, you, can't you can just do that make so, it up yeah. it doesn't work so this is yeah. the first the Students the first try to make time. it up all the time <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there no they're sure. Uh, yeah. um, so th- this is a kind of our our first time trying something like yeah. this um so it's kind of it's a little bit groundbreaking for us um but yeah it's getting getting past the form getting past mm-hmm. you know that this is a big long poem and there's all kinds of names and there's this that and, yeah you know i know and that and that terror of the of the uh, greek of, name of the name <laughs> of, and, and the feeling that um that they have to understand every line to be able to understand the whole which is not a stupid feeling no it's, it's understandable logical. but it it, 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 you know, it's it, yeah. if you try to do that and you mm-hmm. don't have it all at your fingertips, yeah. you're five lines in, you've looked up six names, yeah. you're 10 lines in, you've looked up 20 names, you're and just gonna get, you just think, yeah. I can't do this. Yeah. And I think film can be helpful for that too, because yes. for instance, saying to somebody, you know, when you went and watched that Spider Man movie, unless you're a big Spider Man fan, yeah. There was a bunch of stuff in there you didn't understand. And they had this, all this uh, technical stuff and they had stuff about like radioactive spiders or not radioactive spiders or whatever. Sure. Did you worry that you didn't understand every single bit of it? Yeah. Did, did it stop you from enjoying the movie because you, the techno babble at the beginning didn't actually make any sense? Totally. No? Mm-hmm. Then don't worry about it. Absolutely. You still got the story. Maybe you'll watch it four more times mm-hmm. if you loved it. Did you watch Lord of the Rings? Was there way too much stuff in there for you to keep in your mind? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's okay. It was. But you yeah. still watched it and you still Thanks. enjoyed it. And yeah. maybe you watched it six more times if you loved it. And then you knew a ton about it, but maybe you didn't and you yeah. still understood it. And I think yeah. that that kind of an analogy can help I like a lot that analogy. Too. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I, I use the idea of the sort of, in myth, the idea, the structuralist idea of mythemes. Mm-hmm. And I related them in my first seminar to modern memes. Because yeah. Yeah. Modern, modern audiences, at least the students in my classes, when I put a meme up of, you know, the classic one right right now of the girl looking back at the yeah. boyfriend. Oh, okay. yeah. And they, re, probably, they, they rebrand it. By the know? time this goes <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll already like be months ago. Yes. Yes. Well, it's, yes. it's constantly being used. The guy right looking now. at the girl with yeah. the right. girl behind him. Yeah. 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 Right? And, and like they... They understand it, even when it gets rebranded. Yeah, reused. even though the content gets right. changed. Even and, the content yeah. has changed. Yeah. Yeah. Their placement in the culture, the, it, there's everything's immediately identified through that visual medium. And like myth themes are things that are actually very similar because they, they kind of contain that same type of mm-hmm. data. Mm-hmm. When you see on a pot this thing where if you just show someone who's not from that culture, they look at it and say, well, it's like a naked guy wrestling with like, I don't know, a centaur or something. Mm-hmm. I don't really know what that is. And then later on, you could tell them that it is, you know, it shows like a struggle between a god and a man and or whatever or, it might yeah, be, right? And then, something. so they become reproducible, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When you see them in vases or so on. Yeah. So yeah. Like same and then there's, thing. and then there's, um, so often sort of a few keys if you can get a few of the keys you don't yeah. need to know every word you don't need to know every name you right. don't need to you know you're reading Ovid yeah. Ovid is trying to mess you up yeah. you know when he tells you the myth sure. he's trying to catch you out yeah. but you can once you get a few of these sort of keys yeah. like okay I understand these major gods and yeah. major stories and major elements right. and patterns how stories mm-hmm. are probably going to go right. then you can understand a lot without understanding the details and then you can fill in the details i'm not just saying that i can't argue about you know details the other um good analogy with film and i'm sure many people use this all the time Mm -hmm. uh is to variation in myth yes and that's where where films especially superhero films they've been really helpful to that they've all rebooted every you know three years and there's a different story but it's the same story or like the classic one is the batman origin story and the spider-man origin story yes genesis so many versions of that yeah and nobody people argue about which is best but nobody says uh, okay, what's the real Batman yeah. story? Yeah. See, that's right? can't we just it's funny you bring that yeah. up because when I was an eager undergraduate and first discovering classics, mm-hmm. I was actually doing a history degree. Um, but I wanted to know, like, okay, well, what's, well, the, what's, real the, story? what's the real myth? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then learning that there's not a real myth. There's just all of these remakes and variations mm-hmm. and it depended when you lived and where you lived. Mm-hmm. And, and, they, you, and the same person and, might tell the same chance, story, a different story. Yeah. Yeah. And just Absolutely. just the yeah. chance of what survives mm-hmm. as well, right? Yeah. And so that's one of the first things that, that yeah. I make a point of talking about with yeah. my students because it was something that as that eager undergrad who wants to have get all the right answers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and there aren't right answers. It's using the 
that it's just using the text to support your interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. There are wrong answers. There are wrong yeah. answers, but there's, but no, there's no one, one right answer. answer. Yeah. 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 I prefer to look at it as questions because I like a preference of questions better. Because a lot of that 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 compulsion that you're feeling or that we mm -hmm. encounter, that the students sort of just auto generate, mm -hmm. they're cultural responses. Like we want to know things. Like we want to know the order or the linear quality or the sequence mm -hmm. or what has primacy in a situation. Mm -hmm. But I think with with myth, those types of those that feeling that is driving that impulse is something that the ancients themselves really wouldn't even think about, mm -hmm, yeah. or, nor really care. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. variation to them is the beauty of things. It's not the well, other way it's, around. It's also thinking about the what's the you know why did myth exist? Yeah, it was not primary. It was always about story, but it was mm -hmm. not primarily to tell a story. No, it yeah. existed as a, a functional part of the yes. life of, mm -hmm. of your life. Yeah. So. It's not only just that there were various variations. Yeah. The idea, for instance, that the same author right. might use like Sophocles, mm -hmm. sometimes his Oedipus dies, sometimes yeah. he's exiled, sometimes Absolutely. Acasta dies, sometimes yeah. she doesn't. And it, so it's not just that, well, in Athens, they knew one version or, whatever, or at one point. No, mm -hmm. he was like, okay, what story What do I want to tell? What issues do I want to raise? I can use any version. And to him, it would not think... When, you wouldn't think, yeah. oh, um, which one was right? Oh, I was wrong. My first version yeah. of Oedipus was wrong, and yeah. now I'm telling a better this version. Well, it's like it's yeah, and the same thing. Right, right? Yeah, yeah, and the same thing yeah. with the um, with with. That's why I think superheroes are such yeah. a good yeah. analog yeah. because when a new um, comics creator, a new artist comes along and tells us a new new origin story about Batman, he's not saying mine is right and the other one was like. Um, content wise wrong objectively right. wrong he's saying mm -hmm. oh no my version i want to tell or now we're going to talk about spider-man coming about um because of uh genetic testing well that's sure. because we want to deal with the fact we're scared about genetic testing right so yeah. i'm going to change the version and use this different version yeah. it doesn't wipe the other one out and it doesn't mean the other one was wrong yeah, it doesn't disqualify it's just yeah. it's now useful to use this version yeah and i think that's a it, when you put it in those terms often anyway i find yeah. students are like oh oh that yeah I can totally get that. They, they can, can coexist in yeah. my mind. They can. My my favorite of, of those variations is the is the Medea myth. Yeah. And and Euripides, mm -hmm. you know, changing kind of stuff, changing and, yeah. changing that up, and yeah. you know the story that everybody thinks they know. Well, it's only one version actually. Mm -hmm. Orpheus <laughs> and Eurydice is another yeah. one like that, which very possibly Virgil is the first one to have. Orpheus lose Eurydice. Oh, okay. Ah. Now there's it's, it's hard to know, but yeah. we don't have any evidence for Eurydice being lost until Virgil's eclogue. And so, and, oh, sorry, Bucolic 10. Um, and he, um, Georgic 10, sorry. Again, no, no, it's the eclogue, yeah, eclogue 10. And <laughs> anyway, and- See addendum 12. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll put it in the show notes. Um, but in that, you know, that's, and that's the version everybody knows, and that's the one that all the operas are based on and all the rest, sure. where he looks behind him and he loses yeah. it. But, there's been arguments made by people who know it better than I do that, in fact, Orpheus, in all the versions until then, got her out successfully. And that's sure. why we have the Orphic cult of yeah. him as being someone who, one who can resurrect. Can resurrect. Yeah. And that him losing her is not, doesn't make sense, yeah. you know, in it's terms of rite and ritual. Yeah. And yet once Virgil gave us this more tragic version, it was so resonant. Yeah. That it just became, and it was Virgil. And that it just became the story. But it's the aberration in the tradition. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and and the yeah, and so he, and, and why would he change it? Well, because yeah, change and variation is Good. is the thing that is yeah. exciting, and also because it fit with his larger you point in that mm -hmm. in that. You uh, surprise your audience. Yeah. They don't know that you totally. know, somebody's yeah. Gonna, yeah. Yeah, they think yeah. it's going to work out, and then it doesn't, and and also it fit with themes of exile and renunciation and regret in his work as a whole, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But I mean, I think that one's it's. That one's a little more speculative even than the yeah. Euripides version, but it, it always makes me uh, think of that because yeah. the story, we wouldn't care about that story at all if he got her out. <laughs> like, you know, it would have nothing like the cultural resonance it does now if yeah. he got her out. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of, getting back to, to sort of film and reception, mm -hmm. one of the uh, sort of genres or types of, of mythological film or, or novel that um, we're seeing a lot of these days are ones that show the, the characters self-consciously mythologizing their own story mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. you know you've got the, the, the recent, Her recent hercules, hercules movies yeah where you know he's he's they're trying to create the myth of hercules uh as a as a kind of money-making scheme marketing mm -hmm. device for the mercenaries and, and then that's turns the one out with the rock yeah. sort of been right all along anyways because it turns out sure. maybe he actually was yeah. supernatural yeah. in some form but, yeah and, um, 
I want to use the word meta theatricality, but yeah. you can't yeah. because it's not really a theater thing. It's a cinema thing, so there needs yeah. to be maybe a new term. But yeah. the meta cinematic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's a, well, an awareness. It it's yeah. an awareness of the yeah. myth in the in the yeah. narrative, right? Yeah, and yeah, I, I remember that. And one. that's what Margaret Atwood does so well in the Penelope ad is she shows Penelope trying to take control of her own myth. Mm -hmm and trying to form her story the way she wants it to be told. Right? Aware that it's a story. Aware that it's a yeah. story, and there are lots of different versions out there, and people hear different things, sure. conflicting things about her, and yeah. she wants to get the story straight from her perspective. Yeah, mm -hmm. love that's, that book. That's yeah. really Great resonant, book. I think, with the things going on culturally now, as as North, as Canada and, and, and the U.S., as we're trying to sort out our own societal myths and, mm -hmm. and historical and, myths and self and, yeah, nationhood this, how, and how we're stuff, representing yeah. our, ourselves yeah. yeah well i think it's a perpetual issue and and one that myth tackles mm -hmm. i mean the thing is our very first greek mythological text gives us meta mythology already with helen helen telling her own story mm -hmm. helen when she weaves in the iliad yeah. helen weaving the tapestry of, of the story of, of the Troy, Iliad, right? Yeah, it's yeah. The, she's weaving the Iliad. So you've yes. already, and then you've also got um, the bard in the Odyssey. Demodocus. Who tells yes. the story of the Odyssey. Yeah. So you've already got sort of, um, it, but it's it, aware Helen of in particular, yeah, it's yeah. aware of itself. It's yeah. aware of its mm -hmm. own tradition. Yeah. It's aware of the role of individuals shaping that tradition, but yeah. that they can't completely control it because mm -hmm. Helen yes. is trying to control her story. But we also see in the Iliad that she's only a part of it. She can't do it. Yeah. And it's particularly interesting. I think I think that's part of where the Penelope ad is taking its yeah. its vision. Uh, it's particularly interesting to see a woman mm -hmm. uh, specifically trying to yes. write a male text. I mean, yeah. the Iliad the epic well, is a male genre. I always say that set the record straight yeah. with that one because she has moments where she just comes right out and says, you may have heard, yeah. but what really happened... Well, in right. the Odyssey in particular, yeah. right? In the Odyssey. So yeah. in the Iliad, it's this sort of meta image. Yeah. And then in the Odyssey, you've got her literally saying to um, uh, Telemachus, so, to yeah. Odysseus' son, okay, I'm sure you heard stories about what went on in Troy, but yeah. let me they tell, tell you. you how it actually and then is. Menelaus yeah. going, well, Helen says. <laughs> well, <laughs> but see, actually... And that's the thing with her. You never know if yeah. you can believe her. Anything and, she says. And that's actually one of one of the themes we look at with students is yeah. looking at Helen in the Trojan yeah. Women. And, yes. And oh, yeah. And that's especially a whole because, mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's di yeah. different work, di different author. But again, it's those questions. Can you really believe what she's yeah. saying? Well, last, like, last year I TA'd in a class, a smaller class. It was a second year class. It was called Helen in, in Myth and Film. Oh, yeah. And it was a great class. And uh, and I hope they run it again. We've mm -hmm. done it a couple of times, and I want to I want to do it again. And and again, it's that it's the reception side of classical studies. Mm -hmm. So there's really kind of there's the classical component, and then we kind of break down the barrier, and then we sort of move into other stuff. And and, and it's just that transition mm -hmm. that we sometimes as classicists are are hesitant to embrace. The students don't see that barrier. So they immediately look at a graphic novel and, you know, Homer and mm -hmm. say, this is fine. What do you want to talk about? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we just, you know, and we're like, ooh. They right? aren't siloed. Yeah. They don't have to worry about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that. OK, you should talk about Helen and because you're currently prepping some of the, the uh, ancient world and film course. Uh, what did what did you what films with Helen did you? Oh, cover? my. Well, we, I, I used Winkler's. There was Winkler's textbook. It's called Apollo's Light. It's okay. on classical myth in Hollywood. And then uh -huh. there's another one. Um, we what, what primary sources did we use? Well, obviously the Odyssey and the mm -hmm. Iliad, those sections that those mm -hmm. small little glimpses of Helen that we had right. from the primary sources. We used, um, um, what's the one with uh, Podesta? I think her name is Helen. Oh, Helen of Troy. Helen of Troy from yeah. 56. Yeah. I used that one a lot. Yeah. Um, it, it really is... You know, it's one of those it's emblematic yeah, of, of, of that particular era, treatment, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so you have like the Steve Reeves Hercules, mm -hmm. and then you have Helen of Troy, yeah. and then the sword and sandal kind yeah. of yeah. era, right? And so that that one worked very well. We didn't watch it all in its entirety, but it was there Such on YouTube for them movie. to watch. <laughs> Such a boring yeah. movie, <laughs> and it plays it plays with everything. Like it's, it's a romance. Yeah, it's, it's, romance. it's yeah. one of yeah. those kind of like bored housewife kind of mm -hmm. ones from like made the fifties, where they make Helen to be like, oh, this exciting young stranger came from nowhere yeah yeah, 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 me yeah, yeah. Off my yeah it's, I think it's Paris right like <laughs> that's it that's it and you're just like oh my yeah so yeah so much fun but 
It was, but it was a great, it was a great class. Um, was that the same class that you looked at the Trojan War in World War One poetry? Or was that yes, a, we also yeah. we also did a, a, a the little Tibetan module. in the Swan. <laughs> yeah, we did a little, little module <laughs> in on a, a few World War One poets yeah. um, that uh, dealt with uh, classical themes in the Iliad. Right. Right. It worked okay. And, the, and there's a Xena warrior princess yes. episode that tells the Troy story. Yeah, yeah, we the, just watched Troy it. Story. Last <laughs> week. Yeah, yeah, I know there's a yeah. Xena warrior and princess. And it has Helen and yeah. Just because Xena, yeah. while being Xena, is also the best thing ever. Yes. Uh, the Helen is black, just oh, for the record. Oh, okay. All Not right. ever mentioned, of course, because none of these things don't need to be talked about right. in Xena. Yeah. But it just happens just to be. just happens yeah. to be. And okay. I just, I, I love Xena. I mean, yeah. it did so many, it's obviously ridiculous, but yeah, it's it does so many things that mm -hmm. uh, other shows, you know, will get all yeah. wound up about. And totally. it's just like, of course we'll do this, whatever. Yeah. And that's one of the things I find um, I find in my academic experience is that when um, like I, I remember taking a course on Alexander myself here, but when mm -hmm. that movie came out and kind of I remember teaching when, when Alexander came out. So yeah. don't worry, yeah. <laughs> I can date myself when, more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that 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 there's this reflexive tendency maybe as as classics as classicists and academics to kind of get ourselves tied up in knots about yeah. what is right yeah. rather than to look than to step back from it and say okay well this is the story that people are telling this is the story this is just the next hear. step yeah. in the it's just in the, the next, conversation like, yeah. so so something like the trojan war that story hasn't ended it's it's mm -hmm. just it's just a continuation i know when it we is. stand up in front of the students and say don't get so head up about which is the right version of myth yeah. and then yeah. also stand up and complain about how there are no gods in troy yeah. the movie yeah we're That's in pretty it. hypocritical, it frankly. Yeah. You know, like I, know. I mean, this you can say that. You mm -hmm. can. Uh, what yeah. I've taught ancient world and film, I walked in the first day and I was like, "All right, what we are not doing in mm -hmm. this class mm -hmm. is watching, watching movies and and." Yeah critiquing them for accuracy right now that's not to say we're all going to have moments where yeah. we're going to say talk about that because it's fun sure and it's not to say we won't discuss the differences but what we want to do is ask why why the yeah. differences yeah first of all why did they bother choosing that story if they're going to change it as much as they did right because that's worth asking and then why do they make the changes where they make the changes what does that tell us about society now what does right. it tell us about how we understand this story or what was important that's why does hercules yeah. matter and sure, we can therefore nitpick some details. Sure. But that's like, what? where do we get if all we're, what's the point of that? Saying, well, yeah, I mean, a movie about a myth that never happened isn't accurate. Yeah. Yeah, talk about so? the <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's why I like to raise yeah. the questions. Like the questions that you're yeah. just speaking about there, that's the thing to me. It's, I don't have the answers. I don't profess no. to know them. But, but well, it's those guys. I have the some right theories of, about yeah. some of it, and I'm, yeah. I'm willing to share and will yeah. almost certainly share them in my classes. Yeah, and but, being able to have the, the yeah. students be able to ask the, the more poignant type valid questions yeah. you know, instead yeah. of the surface knowledge that anyone can really Instead of standing yeah. there and saying, okay, now yeah. tell me about Ben-Hur and why this, in what way the chariot race does not conform to yeah, what the Romans to, tell us about the Roman chariot standard, race. Yeah. Now, yeah. there can be value in that, right? Mm -hmm. Because then that's critically looking at your just source and comparing yeah. it with yeah. other things you Doing know. close reading. But, it's, but yeah. it's, it's taking it beyond just like, oh, I don't like that movie because they don't have, you know, I don't like Troy because they don't have the gods in it to say, well, why? Why don't you? Sure. And why does like, that mean? Why, why, why do I prefer yeah. it with the gods? But also, that, that gap what would I have? <laughs> yeah. All you have to do is watch some of the various um, movies that do use the gods, yeah, like, like Clash of the Titans, Titans and, say yourself, yeah. and say to yourself, and say to yourself, is that what I wanted in that Troy movie? Yeah. Like, how would totally. is that how what you would wanted? I have liked yeah. the gods to be present in that movie? Yeah. And how can I imagine them appearing in that movie yeah. in a way that made sense to me now? It wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I, very I feel their loss yeah. in that movie. I will mm -hmm. say, like, I do feel their loss because it, it it means you have to come up with other motivations for a lot of events. And they yes. didn't always do a Which, great job of coming up with good motivations. Yeah. But I also am like, but do I really want a guy sitting on sure. a cloud poking at things? Yeah. <laughs> like, moving a chariot along or doing this, like, bing! Pulling yeah. Paris out of the, you yeah. know, yeah. swooping Paris off the battlefield. Like, no, I'm... And you can kind of get a sense of... of how it would be like now if you look at the new Clash of the Titans yeah. and yeah. how the, the gods in that film are, are done differently than the gods. Even though they're the... very much um, uh, picking up on the way that they did yeah. the Clash of the Titans, the original one, yeah. yeah and it work, they work okay. They work okay. Yeah. But it, it has to be very fantasy mm -hmm. for it to work. Mm -hmm. right. And if you want it to be at all historic, like, 
yeah. for the Rome, for the Greeks, you could have it be really historically valid and real, yeah. and also have gods at the same mm-hmm. time because yeah. that was part of their understanding of the historical real world. Sure. But now We're not, we don't we don't, we, we don't accept that. that. And yeah. so to have embodied gods in an otherwise um, realistic mm-hmm. air quotes here, people yeah. <laughs> realistic kind of setting where people mm-hmm. act in a naturalistic manner and they. Uh, engage in a naturalistic manner with one another and their physicality is within theoretical naturalistic bounds. <laughs> I mean, that's not very, but you know yeah, what I mean. Like sure. the, with the, the convention is that what you're seeing on screen is something that could happen. Yes. To have that and at the same time have embodied gods walking around and doing supernatural things is um, to... It's... It, it's something you have to be really good at to do. And well, I, nobody's um, been able to, they, to but, do it, I don't yeah. think. But we're able to suspend some of those separations mm-hmm. with, with something like Lord of the Rings, right? Where, yeah. right. Where, but that's because it's all mix. in a very... It's, yeah. it's, but it's set all, in a fantasy all, world. Yeah, you're already fantasy. inside yeah. the bubble. Put, and it's like yeah. superheroes. Yeah. Yeah. We can say... Yeah. We've, we've, we've given our... The Marvel character universe, MCU yeah. or yeah. We've DC. Put in a, and, but, yeah. but even superheroes have to walk about. Like They still yeah. have problems. They can't do everything in the movies that they do in the comic books. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because comic books are so clearly divorced from reality yeah. that we can accept all sorts of yeah. stuff. Many, yeah. But the movies often have to pull back from that because they're set in an actual city of New York. Right. Like Batman was better able to do it because it's Gotham. It's awesome. Yeah, there's yeah. But Spider-Man is always coming up against the fact that it's actually New York and this is real people and like... Mm-hmm. They can only go so far in that kind of fantasy. So still, yeah, a, you know. it's still a protected ethos, though, mm-hmm. that gives you yeah, a certain they have degree more lighter of variability. Yeah. And this is something that I, we it came across too with our intro myth classes because we often open the door with Hesiod. Oh and yeah, and then Hesiod is yeah he's there, but you know Homer looms like large, right? So yeah. you're in that Homeric tradition, and then you got a guy like Hesiod who's going to create ultimately and what we'll say like the Hesiodic tradition, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you have to work within a defined boundary in order to innovate or in, it's it's a substitute your own story. And so whether it's you know in the cinema mm-hmm. or whether it's in an oral poem from 750 BC, <laughs> the same rules apply because you're in an ethos, right? Yeah. And you can innovate and you can change and say, well, that's not my Zeus, but, but they're like, well, it looks a lot like my Zeus, but he's not, <laughs> he's not the hand-picked husband of the Iliad, but he is the, you know, the yeah. powerful hero of his own epic. They're the same guy, right? But I have to kind of keep it real. Like that's, mm-hmm. and I know. He's, it has a different yeah. set of constraints. They overlap with they, the constraints right. that Homer has, but yeah. he, he can't go quite the same direction. They can't. And depends whether you're talking works and days or, or you're talking... Or, or um, uh, theogony. The theogony. You know, right. He has different rules in those two as well. Like it, his Pandora absolutely. story and right. works and days is yeah. going to have to be shaped by that more realistic... So like I know setting. like in film studies they talk about this term and I love this term because I think it works really well for myth is enmeshment. Mm-hmm. So when an audience is on board with your narrative they become enmeshed in it and they, the degree of, uh, of availability... Like that they have to the story and understanding it is, you know, kind of codependent on whether or not they they buy what you're trying to sell. Yeah. Like you know, what you're yeah. saying like if those superhuman gods, if they're on board gods, with the premise, yeah, they're they're, they're there. Right? Then they're, they'll be yeah. they're in it, right? But, and it's one of those things that people talk about, like if you break your own rules, right? If you if when st- when Star Trek or sci-fi or something, yeah. If, it doesn't matter what the rules are, mm-hmm. but once you set up the rules, if you break your own rules, you're going to lose. You're going to lose some people, yeah. and you're going to and you're going to lose some faith, and you're not going to have as much yeah. latitude. The next story yeah. you tell, you aren't going to be allowed to go as far. They're not going to take as much on faith. Right. So you can't break your own rules. Mm-hmm. You have yeah. to be careful when you set up your own rules. I and, see that. And it's not just um, internal though. Like sci-fi, to a certain extent, is allowed to just choose any rules and then yes. set them up. Yeah. But when you're talking about myth or you're talking about superheroes, right. you know, Marvel universe or something, yeah, there's you don't get to set all of those rules. Yeah. Somebody else has set some of them yeah. already. So the, the tradition has already yes. set some of them up. Mm-hmm. You can make some changes, but you can't break all of them. You can change, you know, break one or two rules, but not too many of them or yeah. whatever. Well, and that's, and, that's what genre and tradition are. It's well, just a I was new just going to say, it. like, yeah. I mean, I, I imagine that that's very, very much what you know Euripides or or whoever mm-hmm. when they're working with with those myths yeah they can they do make changes but again i mean if they if they're going to change that story too much they're not going to have buy in mm-hmm. yeah from... people are going to be like i'm disengaged yeah. cuz i you even get that with like modern cinema yeah 
yeah. people say, well, would you go and see that movie? And some people won't even go see that movie based on... Because they know already it's going like, to challenge too many yeah. of my bits. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're going to say, like, if that's not my kind of story. I don't really think it's going to work for me or mm-hmm. I or I have an understanding of what it's going to be like. I have, you know, friends of mine who are like Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. purists, right? Mm-hmm. And the idea... You know, of going to so anything now, with, where books. cuts yeah. anything the, out of the book. Just or, yeah. the idea yeah. that it was being made or even to go see it. It's like, you want to go see this? I'm not going to see that. Forget mm-hmm. it, right? So, Yeah. yeah. And, well, and, and I think it, it comes, you get this, um, it comes back to that question of why even bother choosing the story, right? Yeah. So if you're going to, to do Homer mm-hmm. or a story from the Iliad or a story about the Trojan War, if you change it too much... You're not doing the story from the... So, so you lose the cultural capital. You lose mm-hmm. the things you gain from choosing that story in the first place. So right. you can only take it so far mm-hmm. or else all you've got... And, and of course that happens sometimes. There are movies mm-hmm. and there are out there where really the only thing that they've taken from the source text is the title. Right. And mm-hmm. almost nothing like... Like, like the, the Immortals. Like the Immortals, immortals. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah, there's, there's a you character this movie? called... Theseus no. in it. Oh, okay. There's and there's very a little minato- There's a bull. There's a bull yeah, and the thing. Greek gods are in it. Yeah. And he is the son of Zeus, it's, I guess. I don't really know. That's actually not made clear. It's not really made clear. Or Poseidon. It's not, <laughs> he's, he's not really the son. I think he's, he's just mentored, mentored by Zeus. By Zeus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so you've got Theseus and it's set in Greece. But they Greece, pulled the heart and, out of it but, and there's but, nothing in it, right? Like, but it, it's gone. It's been yeah. so stripped and, yeah. you know, that, that it really, like, why did... I, my it's also a bad movie. Right. <laughs> On a separate level, it's sure. a bad movie. But at the end of it, I'm left thinking, why did you not just say, we want to write a story, this story? Right. This, a like, new story. We want to write yeah. this story. And just make it a fantasy and film. And make it a fantasy whatever. film. Mm-hmm. And, you know, cynically, it's because adding a known name from Greek myth yeah, gets you a certain yeah. amount of an, uh, yeah. an, an audience. Yeah. But, but like money. you said, if you stretch that too far, then you're losing, you, you actually then lose, lose that audience. And, you, and people like, you know, I'm, I'm very yeah. anti that movie now yeah. in a way that I wouldn't have been if Mickey it had just Rourke been... Mickey Rourke was in that. Was Mickey Rourke yes, in that? Yes, yes. Yeah. And okay, he plays, now I remember. He plays this, yeah, he's a guy who's called top. Hyperion. Yeah, great. Again, like, okay. what? Why? Why? Yeah. And and he he's mm-hmm. against the Hellenes, which is what the Greeks are called, and he's trying to... Anyway, it reminds me of the world. It's horrible, and, it, and it's also very grim and very, very um, like there's lots of gory, grim, horrible things yeah. happening. And yeah. It's just like it never wins anything credibility to do that. Like I don't care about any of the characters. Yeah. I'm just traumatized yeah. by it. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's necessary to know those rules before you can break them. Yeah. Like you've got to be really familiar and understand what what's happening what the audience is going to expect. for example with yeah. with with the iliad like what are all those roles so that when you take away the gods you, t- you just decide you're not going to mm-hmm. have that that you understand how you're changing the story mm-hmm. and yeah. and and what is it i, mean, I mean can't now that it doesn't have that what, yeah. what, what new yeah. thing doesn't have to mean yeah. Yeah. yeah and i mean i i can't obviously speak for the directors and writers or or, or, or anything like that but i think sometimes that's where things Wolfgang fall Peterson? fall up fall uh fall apart yeah. is that they don't is is that maybe they haven't fully appreciated what they have before they start changing it you know it's yeah. like uh, you know as a writer you can't break the rules until you understand Dude. them right yeah it's it, you know it's yeah. same yeah. same kind of thing is that you've got to understand what you're changing and why you're changing it not just and change why, for the sake of change and you know if the troy story is still alive that yes. tells us that there's something about that story yes. that we care about mm-hmm. yeah. right and it's not just that it comes from a, a culture with status. Yes, that is certainly part of it. But mm-hmm. it, lots of other stories from Greek myth have disappeared entirely. Sure. And a whole bunch of other ones are only known by, you know, fans like us. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. But the Troy one, we still know. So it's got something. So mm-hmm. to then say, I'm going to use it because it has that something, but not spend any time thinking about what it is. Why do people care about that story? What has kept it alive? It's negligent. And then to turn yeah. it into something else, well, it just, it, it, yeah. it's likely to fail. Yeah. And I mean, to some, some extent, the Helen of Troy that you were talking about yeah. does that, right? Oh, totally. It takes, totally takes yeah. that story and then it says, oh yeah. no, what everyone cared about in the Troy yeah. story was a, was love, a love affair yeah, between love affair. a silly girl and a, a very self-centered man. Yep. And that's what that's what's kept it alive for so many years. Well, basically what I think <laughs> they did is they just wrote the whole film around this notion of the face that launched a thousand, thousand ships. ships. Yeah. One line. One line. Yeah. one line and decided to, okay, let's expand from there. Okay, mm-hmm. it's... Who would she be if that's who, who she is? She and... and then what would, how would people relate to that? And oh, yeah. it becomes a romance story, therefore. And... Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's and totally so, part and, of And the thing zero. is, 
that's not it's not totally absent from the why people love the Iliad Mm -hmm. or the Trojan story but it's not the core of what people care about a love affair it's not the core and so you lose all the stuff that makes Mm -hmm. all the rest of the stuff that makes it interesting and now you might as well have just had any romance that's nothing to set it apart as a romance story totally so just out of curiosity to turn this around what would you say is the core because i think for yeah. different people that core is going to be I'm, and i'm curious yeah. to well and i i don't have a good answer to that because i think there are many <laughs> I'm testing you yeah, no, i think there are many i mean but like yeah. um i think it's multifaceted yeah. for sure and that i mean that in itself is the answer there's so many yeah. stories yeah. you can take mm-hmm. out of the trojan story that that's why it's so yeah. productive but At its core, the Iliad anyway, to me, has always been about how humans grapple with what it is to be human and how they grapple with the the Mm -hmm. competition between personal desire, duty, um, uh, external forces, how they manage those things and ultimately fail Mm -hmm. (laughs) to manage those things. And that's what's been and which is why any which is why to some extent the Troy movie works okay for me, Mm -hmm. even though. It's not my favorite movie, but like at its core, that Brad Pitt character is struggling with how to reconcile duty and family and Mm -hmm. personal desire and forces that are beyond his control and to a large extent fails. Yeah. And unfortunately, they add on the whole ending with the Aeneas sword thing to to like to somehow it it becomes not a tragedy at the end, which I think was a failure of nerve on their part. Yeah. Um, but I think that, you know, so that core, that, uh, that's only one reading of the Iliad, but to me, that has always been what was sort of special about it. And, and that's the beauty with Greek myth. So our podcast episode, which will be out by, (laughs) by the time time this one's out, um, about the Bacchae, like it's from a personal perspective, I, I fell into myth when I was assigned to TA. Like right. I, I didn't have some burning passion yeah. for myth going into this. It was it developed and and when you're teaching similar texts yeah. over and over again and yeah. you, you get to be you're digging into more it. into yeah. them and putting things together and and pursuing um, new avenues of thought. And that's how I learned the Bacchae um, was mm-hmm. when I had to, to teach admit, it. Yeah. I always used to and, teach that in, yeah. in my myth class. So it's it's, so it's a it's a common text yeah. for for the for for Dionysus. Um, and discussing the god Dionysus. And um, it's only recently that I've appreciated how multifaceted it is and mm-hmm. how many themes there are in it. Um, because in January... Beyond the sort of mythical yeah, be, like, narrative like, that it gives be, you. Yeah, yeah be, like, just beyond the straight plot. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw an adaptation of it in January yeah. in St. Catharines where it was a very modern adaptation and uh, Dionysus was like a, a rock star mm-hmm. god and, 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 it, and they used it uh, to deal with local issues and oh, yeah, political issues. Yeah. And I loved it. I'm like, I want you guys to film this. I would love, like, this mm. is just because it took the myth, but it showed how it resonates and mm. how there's still the themes. Yeah. And then we went to Stratford, saw a completely different, different, different adaptation, different, different completely different themes that, yeah, that it picked play. up on it. Yeah. Wonderful, equally mm-hmm. wonderful. And it was exploring, um, ideas of gender and sexuality with the one in Stratford, and mm-hmm. it's just like this is the same play, yeah. and, and and that's and, what the best good texts, yeah. right? The best yeah. art, the best yeah. texts allow you to. Yeah, it, it's not that you can do anything with it because it has a core. It yes, has. I mean, yeah. gender and sexuality are in that play. Yes. Yes. It doesn't matter how you put it on; it's always there. Mm-hmm. But whether that becomes what the play is about, or whether it becomes just a side note or whatever. Mm-hmm. is there's so much richness to it mm-hmm. yeah yeah so you can't boil it down to like like you know five points on a piece of paper yeah this is it what the back i mean you know it easily. doesn't doesn't happen yeah. Yeah. so kind of my hope like just coming back to what we were saying earlier i mean we're dealing with a lot of students in in our not dealing with we're teaching a lot of students in in our classes who are never going to um pro- probably never going to take more, more literature area, yeah. or more yeah. courses but the hope that somehow when they come back to these stories and when they see them that they can think about them and think about oh well I, like exactly that well why did they do that in in, mm-hmm. in this movie or in or in this adaptation mm-hmm. and that maybe they'll hopefully a few of them yeah. will discover that that richness yeah. um that, and, that exists and ideally in them be able to translate that way of seeing to other things yeah. in the yeah, world around them. Yeah. Uh, my students uh, have, I've repeatedly had students tell me after the myth, after the uh, 
film class in particular mm -hmm. that uh, I've ruined films for them <laughs> yeah. completely because now every film they watch, all they're doing is like asking these questions. Sure. And I'm like, I mean, it, the, I That's could perfect. not have a better compliment. <laughs> I could not, you know, I could not be given a better compliment yeah. than to be that yeah. class and my, my class on sex and the body mm. and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where the students are like, I can't, oh, all I'm seeing in advertisements is yeah. these things about the body. That like, happened to oh, me. I love that. It's, that it's, happened to me. It's like I, a new pair of glasses. Yeah. Like they have <laughs> always seen this way, but then now they put these on and they're like, Oh. oh my, you know, you could go back to the old way if you want, but it's I started my MA effort. thinking I was going to do something with healing cults of Asclepius. My mm -hmm. first semester, a course on gender and, and sexuality, and there were just so many issues and so many, and I just mm -hmm. got all, and but it changed how I watched everything and, yeah. how, and how I looked at everything mm -hmm. um, outside of classics. Yeah, like, exactly. And that's what I think the best, you know, if, if we have real validity to the discipline classics medieval studies english whatever it yeah. it has to be about more than the exact texts we teach yeah. and the yeah. exact it's, topics we teach it's about how you think yeah, yeah. and how you see and what how questions you, you think of asking and yeah. what assumptions you don't make mm -hmm. yeah and, you know that's a lot of it it's about saying well just don't assume it's natural or normal or the only way mm -hmm. whatever whatever yeah. this is yeah. <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter what it is just to start to unpeel and once you've done that it's like a little loose thread on a you know for yeah. not for everybody by any means but for a lot of people so like a loose thread on a jacket or something mm -hmm. you tug that and then, because oh well maybe this one thing is not the, not yeah. as natural as i thought it was it connected and then yeah. everything yeah. unravels yeah. Yeah. and you're left adrift going oh my god yeah. there's no objective <laughs> truth and you know you have a postmodern crisis oh, and then you have to come and back and then you wind up studying philosophy yeah. and, then, and then you can kind of you know then you reground yourself yeah. and you're like no actually yeah. it's a table it really is a yeah. table i'm okay with it. it's a table <laughs> <laughs> but but that's important too because i um one of the struggles and and I'm sure I'm I'm sure that it's it's one that, that you guys experience too being being in the humanities is is how is how how do we counter the perceived push mm -hmm. for science and mm -hmm. engineering mm -hmm. and right. those those ones that maybe seem to lead to a more direct job you know mm -hmm. like you do a history degree well then you yeah. know you do a classics degree well you know what do you there, do? there's not one specific job but it's yeah. those ways it's of, not job it's, training in other words it's, yeah. it's life training yeah, like yeah. um but it is in a way um, job doesn't mean training. you can't get a job from it. It just it's not directed exactly. Job training yet. Exactly. Um, no, I lost my train of thought. No, no, no. How no, do we no. counter that? Yeah. Counter so, that so, yeah. so one of the ways that that we we sometimes counter it then is like thinking about the skills, and and the skills are part of it. But I think what you're getting at it goes even further beyond. Like you use the skills to yeah, get to that, and point. the skills are, are valuable in and of themselves for sure. And then you yeah. become very valuable in in the workplace. And every week or so, I'm seeing I'm seeing an article about some CEO at some business in some business saying, "Well, we want humanities Silicon people Valley because wants they humanities. can mm -hmm. because they can think." about STEM people and about how mm -hmm. how people interact and how well and not make be, the assumptions yeah. not not you know and, and technology is an obvious place and especially with gender yeah. and stuff like that you know um make a, a health app that doesn't track periods mm -hmm. right just make no okay yes that was specifically the fact that there were only men presumably involved with it yeah. but mm -hmm. but there could have been women involved with it too who didn't think like that because it's about assumptions and yeah. about not making right. assumptions or taking a more you know, like going back to what let me take multiple perspectives on this and imagine myself in different human situations and what would my interaction do be do right. i want to right. have a phone that opens whenever i look at it or not mm -hmm. and what are the safety implications of that and who it works perfectly in this convenient situation but mm -hmm. is there are there people and lives that it won't be convenient for yeah. and that act of imagination yeah um and not assuming that your experience is everyone's experience which right. is what so much like when we do the classical world or the medieval world or literature, yeah. so much of it's about saying, hey, the way you experience the world yeah. is not universal. Right. It's not, don't take it for granted. Right. Don't assume everybody else is looking through your eyes and totally. feeling what you feel. Yeah. And and then the mm -hmm. next question is, how do I find out what they're feeling? How do I, you know, that's the next and well, complicated it step. Well, it takes imagination, but it also takes comfort with not knowing. Yeah. Being mm -hmm. comfortable with, with not knowing. And that, I think, is a really hard thing to do. Part of it is that the school system we go through and that we rewards have all been knowing. successful yeah. in mm -hmm. rewards knowing, mm -hmm. rewards that, right. That, that right answer. Mm -hmm. And 
and this and that's what the students want to give us the right answer yeah, they because they've been trained to do that. The I was absolutely so, that student. I yeah. mean, me I, too. Oh, me too. I wanted the marks. I mean, I wanted to learn, but yeah. boy, oh boy, was that secondary to making well, sure I gave them the right answer they wanted, not just to get the yeah. marks, but because I'm you know. Oh, but, but you're an amazing prophet. I think you're amazing, and I want to be right. I want you to think I'm right. Yeah. You know, and That's the really system important. replicates yeah. itself it because does. the people yeah. who succeed in that system become the next be, generation. Become yeah. the, be, you know, and so so it's hard and it's really challenging to introduce students to this idea through through mythology that there can be multiple right answers mm -hmm. that it doesn't have to be just one thing that that there's more to it yeah. and to be comfortable with you know not being able to piece four different works of literature uh, on some one mythological coherent, yeah. one myth co coherent my mythological timeline yeah. Yeah. and i mean it took me time to be comfortable with not knowing mm -hmm. and, and even as a teacher it becomes you know it, it, it takes time that's for you where to i really willing, learned it to be, yeah <laughs> to be willing to say to them oh yeah no it doesn't make sense yeah no yeah. no i know it doesn't yeah. Uh huh. And you'll they'll ask you a question about like, wait a minute, how could he be doing this when he also did this in this other story? Yeah. They're separate and stories. They're two, say, they're two different it's works. It's okay. Or to say, oh, you know what? I don't remember which version that was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of those, you know, I'm, yeah. I, I, I like yeah. to say it's pedagogical, but it's really just my character that yeah. I like to model uncertainty in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to borrow that. I, 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 I find myself saying on occasion things like, it's okay to have two contradicting notions in your head at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Like you won't die. Yeah. Like it's all right, you yeah. know, and you yeah. don't need to reconcile every opposite. And yeah. that's not yeah. the primary function of mythology. Learning to live with you the cogniz yeah. cognitive <laughs> dissonance. Yeah. 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 It's, like, it's, good, it's a good thing, yeah. you know. I mean, it, it can be a problem in its yeah. own way, too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but we, we do it every day. Sure. It's just when we're made aware of it, it's some, it, yeah. you get quickly skinned. <laughs> that's why I don't like like the idea of canonization as far as mm -hmm. like even literature is concerned mm -hmm. or the word canonical. Like when you come out and you just say, well, well, this is a measure. Well, like who made the yard? stick like what's yeah. the deal right it's like the people who come out with the you were just telling oh, me the other day like these are the shelf i love the these, idea I these, love the these idea. are the books that everybody needs to have on yeah. their bookshelf these these are the great works of literature yeah, yeah. you know and i mean aside from them, ideas and, of diversity and, yeah. and, and all but well according to who yeah they, they sold them like in the early 20th century and, and, and for whom and for and, and for? for whom for yeah. what purpose what yeah. what if, if literature can do so much yeah i don't want my literature to do the same thing mark <laughs> wants his literature to do in my life i don't need sure. the same gaps in my head filled or the same yeah. things opened or the same comforts or right. the same discomforts mm -hmm. as you might right. need yeah. i might need different books to right. make me a better person yeah, if, we're if that's people. the purpose of literature yeah. which yeah. is a yeah. whole other yeah. issue but yeah. if it is I might need some different things than you need. Right. And the idea that anyone could say, no, these, you know, 20 books will yeah. make, Absolutely. will fit the same slots. And that's the, it's always so frustrating when yeah. it's humanity's people who do these things. That's because true. it's like, those <laughs> are is. the acts of imagination. Yeah. I thought we were training ourselves yeah. to do. Oxford, you know, that, that's, they're the isn't ones this, that are making the canonical yeah. list. Yeah. Right? Isn't this what we were supposed to be yeah. opening up our eyes and yeah. yet all we want to do is become more rigid. So. Yeah. Yeah. Put, put well, the walls up. And, and the funny thing is, is like you you were just saying about how how we're teaching about you know your, your experience is not universal but in some ways myth teaches that there there is a certain degree of universal experience and mm -hmm. th there are certain things that like the, the stories of love the stories of human pride of human of this, you know that this speak to who yeah. we are as humans so yeah. so there's a tension between those things. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's two opposites at the exact same time, and we're yeah. okay with and then, it. And then they're, they're universals, but the the meaning of those universals can be different yeah. too. So there's yeah. there's the yeah it's the it's the um, and this is what the theories of myth class is actually really good at getting right. us yeah. to is talking about um, that the two approaches of myth of sort of looking for the universals yeah. and looking at the really contingent at the really specific like so some approaches to interpreting myth are all about you know like the structuralists yeah. or um uh joseph campbell or um ritual Psycho certain or, you know, yeah, yeah. are all about finding the universals mm -hmm. finding those yeah. things in myth that apply to everyone and and they're always <laughs> trying to make them apply for to everyone yeah. Yeah. which is always a bit of a problem yeah. you know the lucky, magic key yeah. yeah but then there are other ones like there some of the ritual based stuff or yeah. some things about um you know very anthropologically based or whatever yeah. that are often about the very contingent what does yeah. this myth mean in yeah. this city at this time right. with these elements and it's the ideal synthesis that nobody yeah. can 
get do. to. Yeah, <laughs> it's somewhere yeah. between it's the somewhere two. where you use yeah. both, where you look yeah. for those universal themes and then you mm -hmm. say, yes, but when you're a woman in Athens in the fifth century, how do these universal themes affect and interact with your life? Right. Or if you're a man in the Norse, uh, you know, in, in uh, Sweden mm -hmm. <laughs> in a different century, how does these universals interact with your specific experience mm -hmm. of life? And that tension is a great one between myth, and it's a it's a productive one, mm -hmm. um, and it's what the theories, mm -hmm. and and which is why I'm I'm no fan of any one of the theories yeah. as your absolutely key, it because because yeah. they they don't get there. Yeah. So I'm curious to know, Mark, how you how you teach theory. Um, we've we've had some some years in that first year myth course. We've had. Uh, professors who experiment with yeah. introducing different amounts of theory to right. students with varying with varying degrees. Chapter twenty five in Powell. Oh, Powell, yeah, yeah. The Read last it, one, and then yeah. we don't talk about it yeah. because it's a Pandora's box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, now, so and that was always no, a dealing... question when I was teaching. I've yeah. a lot of yeah. 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 when I talk with Powell, yeah. when I talk with Powell in particular, it was yeah. always the do you at do you teach that chapter last or do you teach that chapter first? It was always for someone. That was the question. So. Well, there's there's a really good textbook for that that kind of does this. Um, it's by it's Oxford. It's Oxford. Um, it's Divini and uh, I don't know. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's uh, what's it called? It's, it's, it's in, interpretation of myth or something like that. I think, that, I think so. Yeah. Interpreting myth. Interpretations interpreting of myth. myth. Oh, interpretations maybe something of like myth. that. Okay. Or, or yeah, but it's not an introductory textbook. No. No. And and it's it's cross cultural, so it's comparative. It, they, oh, they, I know the book. Yeah, yeah I do yeah. know the book. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they take bits and pieces from all yeah. around the world, and they teach. You know, each chapter sort of picks up on a theory. There's you know a Campbell chapter, and mm -hmm. there's a um, Propian analysis chapter, mm -hmm. and uh, and and so you can you can kind of get them to look at you know the same myths from different interpretations, interpretations mm -hmm. and and see how you draw mm -hmm. different information out of them mm -hmm. and it has a lot of primary text in it and so it incorporates a lot of primary text and it um it'll do case like it'll it, it'll introduce you the theory and then it'll do a case, a case study, study on so yeah. there's no, multiple case studies on the oedipus text and mm -hmm. then there's other ones that are on there's several versions that deal with the um Mesopotamian Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh story. story, and yeah. then there's a number of versions that deal with the Hopi creation myths and right. various uh, First Nations creation myths or Native American cre yeah. creation myths, um, and and it has, but it, it just sort of starts with a number of stories, like it has a mm -hmm. flood flood narratives, yeah. or creation narratives, flood narratives, you know, destruction narratives, universal um, mythological, some some sort of yeah. ones, that, and it yeah. gives you a really wide sample across the world. Cool. And then it kind of gets into the theories, yeah. and but lots of case studies. So it's not just talking about the theories; it's mm -hmm. showing you them work. Yeah. yeah, and then occasionally what I've done is given them then uh, an anthology of extra excerpts from different myths around the world, and mm -hmm. say, okay, you've seen how uh, this theory can be applied to this text. Now try and do it with another text and mm -hmm. see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you practice it, and the nice thing about that textbook is it's very specifically designed to be modular. Yeah, you, you don't do it, it and it order, says in, in, can... like at the front it says this is more text you know nobody's going to be able to use all of these chapters right. it basically says this is more chapters than almost any term yeah. is going to be able to right. deal with yeah. and here's a couple of paths it lays some out it says you know if you really want to focus on this on Greco-Roman mythology yeah. here's or if you want to focus on this type of theoretical approach or whatever it gives you some some mm -hmm. reading suggestions right. but you can also do mix as i did sort of mix and match and put them together and and no chapter assumes it cross references a lot but yeah. it, no chapter assumes any knowledge mm. so you can go like chapter 22 and then chapter 10 and then chapter 43 and then chapter 3 mm -hmm. and for the most part it's not gonna throw them off and uh and it's got lots of it's sort of trying to do like website kind of annotations. So it's got yeah, lots and lots of marginalia mm -hmm. and lots of interpretation of, you know, it, every time it introduces new t new terminology in that chapter, right. it'll define it. It won't rely on you having learned it in another chapter yeah. or it'll cross-reference. That's cool. I really, I mean, it has things left yeah, yeah. out as anything did, does, yeah. but it, I really like it. Yeah, it's good. When it's I good taught course. that class, I um, did as a final, ex uh, final project, um, they had to do group projects where they had to choose a modern work of literature or film or yeah. creativity. And they had to apply several of the theories. They had to choose a couple of theories and then they had to apply it. And they could do a creative work where they could do like 
podcast or a video or right. whatever but then they had to justify like why that approach and what did it tell you and what did it not meet and lots of people did harry potter or mm-hmm. you know right. various yeah. things like that and uh and that seemed to i used modern ones mostly so that they weren't the same ones that were in the book but yeah. also so that the stuff that they knew intimately knew well. yes. i said you know choose, you choose something you know yeah. you aren't going to have to spend all your time learning the story in yeah. order to do it you <clears> can get right to work on it yeah, yeah. yeah. and it worked really well Cool. people yeah. have done some really I, somebody did a board game once of um the 13th uh-huh. warrior the oh. movie uh, and the the Excellent. board game combined psychoanal psychoanalysis the hero's journey and uh oh, one other thing i think and and you got like cards along the way of you have you have to face your anima you have to do, you know, like, you have to do all these things <laughs> Awesome. Antonio great. Banderas, that yeah, one, right? That one, yeah, the movie. yeah, that's yeah. the that. uh, yeah. sort of Beowulf esque. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. I love the way that they, they, they explain how he absorbs the language. Yes. Oh, that I know those transitions. Perfect. I've never seen it done yeah. in such a cool way before. Yeah. Like, it's so you know, perfect. It's, yeah. You know, it's either on or off, and it slowly gets yeah, a bits of pieces. Yeah, he sits there and he can yeah. hear yeah. words that are in English. Well, and even the beginning, too, when they have them all speaking their own languages. They did. And then. He spoke Greek and Yeah, and then you get that, and then. And then you yeah. get the translation. 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 So you're on the other side. At the beginning of the movie, you're on one side of the linguistic yeah. barrier. Then you sort of make that transition with him. And then you're in amongst that yeah. crowd, which is great way yeah. to get your I know. I think, it's, I think it's a beautifully yeah. done movie. It's yeah. great yeah. when you can, you know, laugh at the joke. In Latin? Two seconds before the, uh, <laughs> the translation comes right. out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. I, yeah, yeah. That yeah, that's was a, great. That was a good moment in the yeah. theater. I was yeah. like, yes, it's yeah. working. It was yeah. like, we saw it when I was an undergrad still, yeah. I think, or maybe just in grad school. And, and I was like, I it's, laughed at the Latin That's Omar first. Sharif was in that, right? He was. Yeah, because yeah. I remember when they were in the command tent there and they're at the river. Mm-hmm. And he was asking him to be the interpreter for the for the Norse, Norsemen. Yeah. yeah. And he was saying, you know, T- where find out who's in charge or whatever. I guess assume they were speaking Arabic or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's, and so he went up and he and he spoke Greek to them, right? Yeah. They were just sort of looking at him yeah. like he was a moron or something. And then he tries. So he tried Latin. Latin. Yeah. And then and then oh. the guy went, oh, the one guy in Nostra Rex. He yeah. knew, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they brought him to their yeah. head man or whatever, and it's, right? It's such a neat. It's such a neat example of that like multicultural. Yeah. Uh, period and yeah. No, it's, I think it's. I mean, it's. It's got its own fantasy, silly elements, sure. as all of these yeah. movies do. But it's, I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, kind of cool. The book is even better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The book's really good, Fantastic. too. Fantastic. Awesome. I'll have to read that. Yeah, I think it's called, like, Eaters of the Dead or Eaters something. Eaters of the Dead. That's okay. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'll be on the show notes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, okay. I'll put this all in. I yeah. promise. I'll put yeah. all references to anything you we mentioned to at all. There, and then that book. And if I remember the cover of that book. It has some like interesting like Hindu we art need, or something. We need like some Amazon yeah. deal with a link. Yeah, there. I know. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, well, on that, we should probably draw this yes. to a conclusion, even I though we could so. probably talk it's for another three hours. <laughs> but I'm the kids will be home soon, coming. and you have to get back yeah. to yeah. Elliot Lake, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah we have to yeah. hit the road. Yeah, but this so has been, been so much fun. Been fun. Yes. Yeah. It's been. yeah, we'll, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, no, maybe sometime yeah. we'll come south. It's always possible. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't never want to make any promises on these things, but uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. We're allowed we're, to be we're up a little here bit of a track. more because my mom yeah. just moved up here. So. Oh, there you right. go. And then yeah. we're just we're on the way to anywhere, right? You can't kind of go up north without okay. going through Sudbury. <laughs> on the way to anywhere. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> or nowhere. It depends on your perspective. That's the ultimate title of the Hobbit, I think. Wasn't that what <laughs> Tolkien was working on? On our way to anywhere. It's about the journey, right? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so thank you for joining us. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us, uh, inviting yeah, us. thank you for the tea. So, oh, well, and thank yeah. you for the baked goods in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> all right, yeah. well, we will all be back at you at some point. I'm not yes. even sure when this is going to go up, so That's who okay. knows what will have come before it or what will follow it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll enjoy it. Yep. Yeah. All right, bye. 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 For more information on this podcast, check out our website, www.alliterative.net, where you can find links to the videos, blog posts, sources, and credits, and all our contact info. And please check out our Patreon, where you can pledge to support this show and our video project. You can go directly to the videos at youtube.com slash alliterative. Our email is on the website, but the easiest way to get in touch with us is Twitter. I'm at Avensara, A-V-E-N-S-A-R-A-H. And I'm at alliterative. To keep up with the podcast, subscribe on your favorite podcast app or to the feed on the website. And if you've enjoyed it, consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. It helps us a lot. We'll be back soon with more musings about the connections around us. Thanks for listening. Bye.